Okay, so I'm going to see if I can finish this up, <clears throat> this Dalton, uh, this Dalton attempt. This is a cast here. This is a cast. This is made of plastic, some sort of resin of a uh, Dalton point. A real one. Now, uh, when you compare these two, the overall size is, looks pretty good. But the flaking is a little different. The flaking on the real one uh, is much finer than this. These are wider flakes. Uh, the basal thinning, this one here has a long and fairly wide, well it's actually two flakes, looks like one above the other. I could be wrong about that, but anyway, it's a uh, it's it's in the center. Mine is a little bit off, and I did it kind of quickly just to get it done. So it's a little different as far as the neatness, and uh, it's a lot more noticeable. The thinning is more noticeable on one side of the real of the real one than on the other. The other one is just uh, flaked. The uh, ears are relatively thick compared to the center part here, but I think what happened was this thinning flake went too deep and made it too thin there. I mean, not too thin, but relatively thin compared to the rest of it. And uh, mine's more, you know, more hefty. But I've got one more pass of flakes to do. I'll be doing these a little bit more carefully and, and smaller more narrow just to clean this up and then I'll do the uh, slight constriction here on the hafting area on mine I'll, I'll, I'll nap a little more on these edges to bring the sides in a little bit and then I'll be done with it of course after I grind it I'll be done with it alright so also a couple notes on the uh, aluminum tools uh, like I said, I've switched over completely to aluminum. I'm not going to use the copper very much anymore, except in my ABO kit. I'm, I'm going to use a little bit of copper in my natural materials kit because I believe the Native Americans did have access to copper uh, for a lot of their arrowheads. So I'm, I'm just going to leave the copper uh, in my natural tool kit, a small amount. Uh, and it'll be mainly in the shape of uh, awls, long thin pieces and maybe some notching tools out of copper. Anyway, my main percussion tools from now on are going to be aluminum. And uh, I've, ha I've been having some questions on this. Uh, the, ma the main differences I find other than softness on the aluminum is the fact that it bends. These bits will bend if you put a lot of force on them so they can't stick out too far. Uh, copper can stick out a little bit further than this but I find that uh, they bend too easily if they stick out too much further than this. And I have to uh, file these a lot more often so it, uh, that has to do with the softness. And it's lighter too but I don't notice too much of a difference because of the lightness uh, the uh, aluminum is very light in weight but it's comparable to antler or bone so I'm not worried about it I mean I haven't noticed too much either uh, this is a notching and a regular flaking tool this is for larger pressure flakes this is for smaller pressure flakes and maybe a little bit of notching it's it's still not long enough for a regular notcher this is just for shallow notches and small flakes. Okay, so let's see here. I kind of don't want to do too many more thinning flakes on this. Although I need need to get I do need to get it thinner in the middle here. So I'll do some thinning flakes. Kind of messed up here with that step fracture, but I might, I might be able to to get that out. 
Okay. Now the edges on the real one, they're kind of all over the place. It's not regular. It's not like a Cody point where uh, it's very regular, you know, a flake here and then a flake there and then a flake here. It's just all kind of random flaking. Uh, there's some thick spots. It's not perfectly straight. And there are some step fractures. So it's it's an expedient type point. And I believe these were used for both knives and at lateral darts. And they come in a range of sizes. This seems to be a good average. So this is um, almost three and a quarter by inch and a inch and a quarter. Okay. And again, this is made of plastic. It's a it's a cast of a real one. It's made of black chert. Okay. And this is hornstone. Very very nice material. Okay. Six minutes on that little explanation and most viewers don't hang around longer than six minutes so <laughs> hopefully I didn't lose you guys all right so all I'm doing is I'm going to strengthen the edge for the final pass nothing fancy It step fractures very easily. Yeah, step fractures very easily. Of course, a lot of you guys are, are extremely experienced with pressure flaking and know how to avoid those step fractures with the pressure. I'm wondering if I should even use any pressure on this.
Now I can't remember if these were flaked in some sort of order, like this side first or that side first or from base to tip or tip to base. So I'm just going to do it randomly. I do have a book on it. Let's see. I don't know if it'll say. Uh, there is a Dalton description in this, in this book here. Page 40. Okay, so let's see if they got pictures. All right. So over here, the pictures of Dalton's are E through J. So this is one. This one's considerably smaller than the cast, but the scale is a little bit small too. It's just slightly smaller. As you can see, 30 millimeters, well, I don't know if you can see it. The 30 millimeters in the book is smaller than the 30 millimeters on the, on the ruler, so 
This is actually smaller. Let's see here. These ones should be full size. Okay, so all the way to J or Dalton. These, this one, that one, and these. Consi all considerably smaller than these two examples. Okay, and they, these have, these are resharpened, and you can see that some of them have kind of a twisted or beveled, beveled look to them. That's a beveled area on the edge, and they, they don't have perfect basal thinning. Okay, these little basal thinning flakes, they can be single like this or multiple. Okay. But I don't think it has the sequence of flaking in the book here. Okay, anyway. Uh, I don't think it does. It might. And I might be wrong there, but I'm not going to spend too much. I'm not going to spend time looking at the book right now. I just need to get this done tonight. It's getting kind of late, so... I knew that was a little bit risky there because I could see some of those. I could see it at the end there, it dived in a little bit, but I think it'll be all right. The, uh, the termination on the thinning, the basal thinning flakes, they had, they had dived in slightly. So I was a little bit worried about if I hit that incorrectly I could have sent a fracture all the way through here it would it might have connected up to the end of that termination you know I could have get a I could have gotten an incipient crack to expand and then match up to the edge of that and then continue to proliferate and go all the way across so that's one thing uh, I was watching for But if I had mentioned it before I flaked it, I probably would have done it wrong. All right, so I'm gonna leave these ears thick, just like on the original. See how thick these are? These aren't thinned down like on some other points I've seen where these ears are really thin. On this particular one, they're thick, so I'm gonna leave mine fairly thick. This might be a little too thick. And I'll pressure flake that a little bit thinner. But for now it's good.
I was afraid of something like that. That really bugs me. It bugs me on this style because you don't see that very often on Dalton's, I don't think. See, they like the nice clean surface. Oh, there is one right there. It's, it's kind of a steppy thing right there. We got a little bit of steppy stuff going on there, but for the most part, it's pretty clean. Okay, so I'm running out of space again on my camera, so let me just uh, stop here and then continue on the next one.